Hi everyone, so today I'm gonna to be talking about the inner ear, and I've already done a video on the external ear and the middle ear, so if you haven't seen those yet, you may wanna watch that those before uh, watching this video. So let's go ahead and review real fast though, and this here is my external ear. This part you see right here is the actual ear, we called it the auricle or the pinna, right? And then we had the external acoustic meatus, which is this part right here, and um, this is more commonly known as the ear canal. Now I've already got drawn there. This is the tympanic membrane here, which is going to separate my external ear from my middle ear. All in here, this is my middle ear. So I have three bones, and there's more to it than this, right? But I have three bones in here. I have the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And if you notice, the stapes are attached to a round window. So before we get into that, this is my inner ear here. So in the inner ear, I'm gonna have basically two parts. I'm gonna have the cochlea, and I'm gonna have the vestibular apparatus. The vestibular apparatus is gonna be responsible for things like your balance. We're not gonna talk about this in this video, but this is the cochlea right here. And when people see the cochlea, they say it looks like a snail. I like to say it looks like a cinnamon roll. So inside my cochlea, well, before we get there, we have now this structure here, if you notice it's round, or oval shape, actually, and this is called the oval window. And if you notice here, we have another structure. We call this the round window. The oval window is basically the beginning of my cochlea. The round window is going to be the end. Now, inside the cochlea, you're just looking at this from the outside. Inside the cochlea, we actually have three tubes in here, which we're gonna be going to in just a minute. And the first tube is gonna be called my vestibular uh, I'm sorry, scalar vestibuli, which would be the tube that would be coming right down like this. So it's going to be in this area that's right here. All right, this would be my vestibular, or my scalar vestibuli. Then my next tube would be the cochlea. I like to call it the cochlear duct, but it's also known as the scalar media. And we'll go into these some more. And then up against the round window here, my last tube is going to be what we call the scala tympani. And like I said, we're gonna go into these in just a minute. It kind of gets confusing if I draw the tubes going all the way around, but just imagine that they're going all the way around like this. So the first thing about the cochlea is the cochlea actually wraps around something. It's a piece of bone and it's called the uh, modiolus. So if I just go like this here, it's a triangular shaped bone. All right, and it's called the modiolus. And if I were to draw the tube, let's say, let's say we were looking at this structure. If I were to take this off and set it on there and then cut it in half, it would look something like this. You'd be looking down into the tubes inside the cochlea. So it looks something like this here. And then inside, like we said, inside each tube, we have actually three tubes. And we're gonna be looking more at this in just a minute. But What's gonna happen now is all of these tubes here are going to have nerve come out and they're gonna eventually go to the brain. So that's the modiolus there. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take this and let's unwind this, okay? So it's all wound up like this. Imagine you have a cinnamon roll now and you just unwind your cinnamon roll, okay? And we're just gonna unwind it and it would look something like this here. This would be my oval window here. It's right here. So this is the one that I had my stapes attached to. Okay, and then I'm gonna have my round window right here. All right, so this is my round window. And then Draw this like this, and I'm gonna draw this part. I'm gonna make this purple, and let's draw the bottom part of this. Uh, let's go red, and then I'm gonna have the red coming like this. Okay. Now, there's a reason why I did these in different colors, and we're gonna see that in just a minute. Between these, I'm gonna have another tube. All right, so let's get started on these. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this. 
This is known as my, like we said, my scala vestibuli. So it's this part right here. This is my scala vestibuli. Okay. Down here, I'm going to have my scala tympani. Okay. Now, my scala vestibuli is going to contain a fluid called perilin. My scala tympani also is going to contain perilin. In, if you notice this purple line right here, this is going to be a membrane that's going to play a big role in here. And we're going to call this our vestibular membrane. So it's going to be all of this right here is my vestibular membrane, okay? If you notice this red line here, that is going to be what we call the basal membrane. Okay, so this is gonna be my basal membrane right here. This structure in here is gonna be my scala media, or also known as the cochlear duct. or like I said, the cochlear duct, okay? Now, whereas these contain paralymph, those two contain paralymph, this is going to contain something called endolymph. Now, the difference between paralymph and endolymph is endolymph, first the location, because it's on the inside, right, between these two, and this has more potassium uh, than these two have. On this basal membrane here, I'm gonna have another structure, which I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, because we're gonna be talking about it a lot in just a minute. And this is going to be called my organ of cordae. That's my organ of cordae. We're gonna be looking at that in just a minute. Now you might notice that my scala vestibuli and my scala tympani meet right here, and there's a name for that. So this is going to be called the helicotrema. So that's basically where these two parts meet. If you were to look at this here, my helicotrema would be right here. There's just a little opening that's up there where the paralymph can go around to the opposite side, okay? So that's basically what this would look like if it was rolled out and you're looking at all the tubes. If you don't quite understand that, that's fine. We're gonna look at this at a different angle in just a minute. What I'm going to do now is I am going to pretend like I, I take, I cut this, okay? I'm going to basically pretend I can take a cross section of this, okay? And, and right now you're looking at this like a tube, like that, right? Or if we were looking at it, you're looking at it like this and there's three parts of there. So pretend like I, take, I cut this section out and now I'm going to turn it towards you like this. So now you're looking down into it, okay? So it is like this here. Just imagine the tubes are all going this way. I take the cross section out and I go like this. And it's going to look something like this here. Okay, so it's going to look something like this here. And let's go over some structures on this really fast. So this part here was actually the top part that I had over on the other side. This is going to be called my scala vestibuli. Okay, like we said before, the scala vestibuli has perilymph. Okay, and once again, where a second ago you were looking at that from the side, now it's like you're looking down the tube, okay? So this is gonna have perilymph there, and this is going to be my vestibular membrane. Okay, there's my vestibular membrane right there. So now, this right here, like we said, it's a vestibular membrane, right? Inside of here now, this is going to be my cochlear duct. Okay, also known as the scala media. And we said that this is going to contain endolymph. Okay, so I'm going to have endolymph in here. 
Now, down here, once again, I had my scalar timpani. Right? And then the scalar timpani, we also said this contains pyramids, like we already said. So I'm just reorienting you on how this looks now. This structure right here is going to be my basal membrane. Okay, and then once again, this is going to be my organ of corti. All of this structure here is my organ of corti. Now, if we look at the organ of corti, you're going to notice a few things. There's a big pink thing right here, right? We're going to call that our tectorial membrane. And the tectorial membrane is actually, imagine jello. Right? Imagine it's jello. That's kind of what that's like, right? For what it's worth, this blue structure, I'm going to do another video on just the organ of corti. I'm not going to go as much in depth into it on this one as uh, I can. But we have this blue line here, which is called my reticular lamina. We also have these little cells, which would be all over in this white area. I just didn't draw them. Those are supporting cells. But if you notice also, we have this one cell all by itself right here. This is going to be called an inner hair cell. Now, you're only seeing one, but remember, you're looking down a tube here. So you have a whole bunch of these going all the way down this way and all the way back that way. This is a two-dimensional structure. If it was three-dimensional, you'd see these coming out. If you also notice, we have these here. So if those are inner hair cells, right, because the, the closer to the inside of my head would be that way, these are going to be called outer hair cells. Okay, and that's going to be these here. Now, if you notice, there's three rows of outer hair cells. Okay, and again, just like this, imagine you have a whole bunch of these coming out this way and a whole bunch that would be going back the other way, all the way through the cochlea. So we have the outer hair cells and we have the inner hair cells. So now, the inner hair cell basically does about 95% of the hearing that we have. So it's going to do about 95% of... I'm just going to put here, and it's actually sending signals to the brain, right? Are going to come from this part right here. Over here, these these outer hair cells, they're going to be responsible for helping. Like if you ever, if you ever at a concert, and you're trying to just listen to one set, one instrument, that would be like for fine tuning things like that. It's also going to help, like if you ever like turn your headphones on, like you have your earpods in, right? And you turn it off them on, they're they're too loud. These will actually contract a little bit, and I'll go into that in another video. So the 95% of the hearing is going to come from there, so 5% is going to come from here. So now, what's going to happen? Oh, some things real quick, too. On the hair cells, on the hair cells, the closer we are to that oval window, the shorter these are and the stiffer they are. So the closer we are to the oval window, the shorter they are and the stiffer they are. They're responsible for hearing high frequency sounds, right? Because high frequency sounds are going to have waves that come more often and, um, and they're going to help drive those in. Now, your deeper sounds would be more closer to where the helical tremor was, right? And when we get to there, these hair cells here, actually called stereocilia, they're going to be longer and more flexible. So if they're short and stiff, they're going to be closer to the oval window and they're going to be responsible for high frequency sounds. If you are towards the helicotrema and further into the cochlea, they're gonna be longer and more flexible and they're gonna be responsible for deep sounds, right? So, anyways, this does about 95% of afferent to send signals to the brain. This is going to do about 5%, right? This gets actually efferent fibers. Again, I'll talk about all that in another video when we go over to organ of corti. So let's talk about what's going to happen here. We have this structure here. If you remember, I said my stapes was attached to the oval window, and the oval window is basically right on the vestibular, the scale of vestibuli. So my oval window has the stapes, and when you talk, you get vibrations. And the stapes will actually cause the oval window to vibrate. When the oval window vibrates, this paralymph starts to make waves. 
Remember, you're looking at this thing coming out this way and going that way. So do all the windows hit in this? It's causing waves in the paralymph because the paralymph is the fluid. As you get the waves in the paralymph, it's going to cause this vestibular membrane to vibrate up and down, right? So I, I get the oval window hitting the paralymph in the scalar vestibuli. That's causing waves. As that happens, this goes up and down. As this vibrates up and down, the endolymph, which is a fluid in here, starts to go up and down too, right? Starts to go up and down also. As this goes up and down, my basal membrane is going to go up and down too, right? Two things are gonna happen when the basal membrane goes up and down. One, these hair cells, the stereocilia, are going to hit against the tectorial membrane. But I also have endolymph that's going to be going in and out of here as the basal membrane goes up and down, right? Endolymph is gonna be going in and out, causing these hairs to move back and forth. As the hairs move back and forth, they are going to send signals to the brain. If the hairs start moving towards this tall one called the kinocilium, what will happen is it will send signals to the brain. When they move away from the kinocilium, it's gonna not send a signal to the brain, but this happened real fast, so it's almost like constant signals that are going, okay? So once again, as this goes up and down and indolence going in and out, I'm getting these hair cells shearing against the tectorial membrane, and it's sending signals to the brain to hear, okay? One other structure I wanna go over real quick is if you notice I have this little triangle right here, and these are called cochlear rods. Some folks will call them cochlear pillars. And then this is the cochlear tunnel, okay? So again, as I get the shearing from, from the endolymph going up and down, or causing the basal membrane to go up and down, I get the shearing of this against the tectorial membrane with the endolymph also in there going in and out, and it sends a signal to the brain. So that's basically how you hear. I will do another video talking more about the organ of corti. And if you like the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching.